You love it in Christ? Tattoos. I don't have one. I don't want one. But like the rest of you, there are times I find them pretty hilarious, like when either the recipient of a tattoo or the tattoo artist or a combination of the two just don't get the tattoo right. For example, while this person may have persevered in some of their other school subjects, he obviously didn't not listen not very well in English class to the lesson on double negatives. Or there's this one inked by someone who never entered a single school spelling bee for good reason. You're just going to have to see it to belive it. <laughs> then again, he certainly does not lack confidence in himself. As you might guess, the decision to get a tattoo should never be taken lightly, nor should it ever be requested when your mind is a bit cloudy, befuddled, confused, or otherwise impaired. Those who get tattoos should always think them through thoroughly, no short-sightedness allowed, or you might end up wearing this little number. And finally, as we move along now into something a little more constructive, I'd be kicking myself forever if I forgot to show you one more, and I'll just let this little tattoo speak for itself. Now, I talked to my daughter the other day, and she told me that kids her age, and she's just five to seven years older than you, if they do get a tattoo, and she doesn't know too many of her friends who do get them, but she said her generation would likely get something meaningful to them, like getting a tattoo of a Hebrew word or a Greek word, because they know that those are the original languages of the Bible, and they might ink the Hebrew word for loving kindness or the Greek word for grace, on themselves as a tattoo or even a small cross. And by doing it, she said they are using it as another way to make a profession, an exclamation of their faith. They're saying, my identity as a person is all wrapped up in Jesus Christ, in God. And I want people to know I belong to God. I belong to Jesus Christ. So I'll get a tattoo to proclaim that. All right, I'm not going to say whether that's right or wrong. This isn't a message, obviously, on getting or not getting tattoos. And students, I don't want you to go home tonight and tell your parents, the pastor at Faith Community loves talking about tattoos. Oh, your parents are here tonight. Oh, oops. Now, I don't want to tell you about people who get tattoos as a way to proclaim their faith in God. What I want to tell you about is a God who says in his word to us that he has engraved. That's a lot deeper than a tattoo, isn't it? God has engraved you and me on the palms of his hands. Think about that for a moment. God says, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. No grammatical issues there, no spelling errors, no short-sightedness, and definitely no regrets. God says that to us in Isaiah 49, verse 16. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Let that sink in. Isn't that incredible? God saying that to you and to me. Sometimes we would say about all those tattoo pictures we saw, oh, that was a fail, a tattoo fail. Can you imagine God saying that about you? After he has told you, that he has engraved you on the palms of his hands. Oh, yeah, as soon as I engraved her on my hand, fail, because what a failure she is. I engraved him on my hand as kind of an afterthought, fail. What a failure he is to me. Students, listen very carefully. Don't you 
ever think that. He would never say that about you. When he says to you, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands, he means it. He stands by it. It is forever. Do you believe it? That's what he wants to know from you. Do you believe it? Many of you do. Some of you wonder. Maybe a few of you don't. Do you know what God says to each one here? He says, I so want you to believe that. That I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. I so want you to believe that that's how much I love you. That's how much you belong to me and I belong to you. I want you to believe that so badly. Here's what I did. I gave up my son for you. I gave him up to die on a cross for you. An excruciating death for you. And I forsook him for you. And when they pounded the nails into the palms of his hands, when they engraved those nails into his hands, I made it so that you were with my son Jesus on that cross. Your sins got engraved into his palms on that cross. You were united with him on that cross engraved into him on that cross as he paid for your sins, every last one. And he engraved his righteousness onto your heart. And God says, let there be no doubt about it. See those nail engravings on his palms? Put your hand there. Stop doubting and believe. There is no doubt. You were there. And that's why I can truly say, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands because of Jesus, my son. And right now, again, he asks each one here, do you believe that? And he's waiting for every single answer. Yes, I do. He's waiting for your yes this very night. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful, so thankful that you have engraved us on the palms of your hands, even as the nails engraved the palms of Jesus' hands, even as we were crucified with him on that cross. Father in heaven, you have done something unthinkable and so gracious, so incredible, your love for us. You've engraved us on the palms of your hands, and you ask us to believe that. Help us to say yes, definitely, absolutely, course. I do, I do, I do believe. Help us all to say that every single day and be reminded that we're engraved on your palms. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.